I'm now working with a modified copy of the work file, with the author names that were previously in the original books table, now moved across to the new separate authors table and linked to the corresponding book records in the renamed publications table using the author ID field from the authors table. In later lessons, we'll look at the structure in greater detail, but for the time being, let's see how the data looks. As you've seen in earlier lessons, FileMaker provides controls in the lower section of the status toolbar to change the layout view, so you can choose either form view, list view, or table view. And while that's very easy and useful up to a point, there are a couple of shortcomings. For one thing, the selection of fields you might need to see in a list or table view will often not be the same as those you might want to see on a form. With the data arranged as a form, you have plenty of room available, so it's convenient to include quite a bit of detail. Whereas it's not so helpful to have too many fields cluttering up a list or table view. Much more than a handful, and the amount of scrolling from left to right starts to be a problem. Also, the arrangement of fields that might be ideal in a form view doesn't really lend itself to being viewed as a list where you'd probably prefer that the fields were arranged into columns. Fortunately, FileMaker lets you sidestep this dilemma quite easily by allowing you to build as many different views of the data as you need. One of the simplest ways to do this is by creating multiple layouts, each showing the data from a given table, but arranging a different selection of fields and other layout elements in a configuration suited to a particular purpose. To demonstrate this, I'm going to create two separate author layouts, one suited for use as a form, and another to provide a list view. Notice that when the current author's layout is viewed as a form, everything is bunched up together at the top left, while most of the screen area of the window is wasted. But when viewed as a list, although more of the available window space is used, the arrangement of fields is not very list-like. First of all, let me go into layout mode on the author's layout, and I'll make a few changes so that it will be better suited to its role as a form. We'll talk about the various layout tools and techniques in greater detail and depth in later lessons, but for now, I'm just going to make some adjustments and move things around quickly here, so you can see that it's pretty easy to create a view that's better adapted to a particular use. Before I start making changes to the objects on the layout, I'm first going to select a layout theme to determine the starting point for the look of the layout and all its objects. To do that, I need to go to the Layouts menu, and choose the Change Theme command. That brings up the Change Theme dialog. And you can see that this layout, by default, has the cool grey theme from the group of themes called FileMaker Millennium applied. In this preview window at the right of the Change Theme dialog, we can see the basic layout and style of the cool grey theme. If I select another theme from the list of themes at the left, we'll get a preview of the style of that theme. I'm going to select the purple theme from the group of themes called Glass. And when I click OK, you'll see that the layout immediately changes to adopt the look of the purple theme. Next, I'm going to change the size of the header by taking the mouse to the header part label and dragging it downwards. And I'll also change the size of the body part so that the header and the body and the footer combined fill the window. Now I'll drag the right hand side of the layout to the right of the window. Just making a few minor tweaks to get things just in the right place. Now I'll choose the text tool and click in the header area and type a name for the layout or a heading if you like. center the text and position it squarely in the middle. Next I'm going to drag a box around all of the fields and their labels and bring them down into the middle of the layout like so. I can delete the header field. I'll select the field labels and move them down. I'm using the down arrow having selected a number of labels to nudge the selected objects one pixel at a time. And now I'll choose the box tool and draw a box around these objects. 
Using the Arrange menu, I'll send the box to the back, and I'll give the box a lighter colour. With these changes, the layout is now designed to be viewed only as a form, so it makes sense to disable the other views to avoid confusion that could result from viewing it in the wrong format. To do that, I'll go to the symbol up here that brings up the Layout Setup dialog. And in the Views tab of the Layout Setup dialog, I'll disable the options for List View and Table View. When I click OK and go back to Browse Mode, we'll now only have the option to view this layout as a form. Let's take a look. Sure enough, here in Browse Mode, you can see that the controls for List View and Table View are now dimmed and unavailable so the layout is locked in form view. Now, looking at the layout, it's pretty close to what I was aiming for, but I can see a few things I'd like to change. In particular, the layout isn't quite fitting in the window. So, back to layout mode, and I'll choose View Inspector to bring up the Inspector palette so I can make some precise adjustments to the width and height of the layout parts. On the first tab of the Inspector, near the top, this is the Position tab, you can see fields for position and size, and without anything selected on the layout, the width of the layout is active, and we're able to make a change to the value. Before I do, I'm going to click on the measurement increment to change it from inches through centimeters to points, which allows me very fine-grained control. And I'll change this to 916 points which will just take away that tiny hair of white we were getting down the edge of the right-hand side of the layout. Next, I'll drag the body part down a little way, and we can see the height value in the inspector changing as I drag the body part downwards. And while I'm in layout mode, I'm going to select all of the text objects and change the font. I'll choose Verdana, which is a really good cross-platform screen font. Now I'll just tweak the position, dismiss the inspector, and tweak the position of some of these objects. I'll make the title 20 points. I'm going to shrink down the font size of the labels and I'll change their colour. Let's make them a nice purple colour. That's good. I'll also make them bold. And the fields, I'd like the text colour to be a dark grey. And next I'll spread the fields out. To do this I'm using the arrow keys to nudge them down one point at a time to get a better layout of the objects, a better spread of the objects on the layout. Now I'll have another look in browse mode and see how that comes up. Next I want to make a copy of the layout that I can edit to make an alternative view that works better as a list. So from the layout menu, I'll choose duplicate layout. You'll see that we now have a layout called Author's Copy. First of all, I'll enlarge the header, position a rectangle object over the header, the lower part of the header. I'll just dismiss the inspector so I can make some fine adjustments and see what I'm doing. Nudge upwards with the arrow keys on the keyboard. That's good. And I'll change the fill colour of this rectangle. Oh, that's a bit bright. Let's dull that down a little bit. I'll take out some saturation and reduce the colour a little. Next I want to bring the filled labels up into the header area. This is going to be a list, remember. I'll take that rectangle to the back behind the filled labels. Position each of these as a heading above the column that we're going to make for this list. 
and if I shift click on those to select them I can move them over to the right to make room for the title and now I need to delete the background box bring the fields up into position the author ID field can be quite a lot narrower the title field can be narrow as well first name middle name and last name for the list view we'll bring all of the font sizes down a point we'll take off the fill take off the line around the fields move them up a little and next i want to shrink the body part into a narrow band and just as with the previous copy of the author's layout I want to change the view options so that this layout will be always list view so I'll turn off the option for form view and enable the option for list view okay let's see what we've got when we go back into browse mode there we are a nice neat list allowing us to navigate through the records. One more thing I'd like to do, and that is using the Manage Layouts window, I'll double click on the author's copy to change its name to Author's Listing. And I'll drag the position of the layout in the list up immediately below the original author's layout. So the two versions of the author's layout appear side by side in the menu. Now we can flick between them a form view and a list view of the same data. With these two separate layouts in the file, I can now very easily swap between two quite different views of the same data, giving me a lot more control over how things look and what appears where on the screen.